Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our monthly fellowship assembly for the 20th of September, cool morning in Alberta. Uh, happy that you all could join us. And today we have um, a great day lined up and we're, we're going to start off with a bang and ask uh, Sharon to introduce Brenda. Good morning, everybody, welcome. It's my pleasure to introduce Brenda Race to you. Uh, Brenda is a career coach who provides virtual job search and career planning services Canada wide with a background in training and development. And she's been doing this since 1996 and also employment services since 1996. She began enjoying our RECO events in March of this year and loved us so much. Uh, she became <laughs> a member and was inducted on May the 17th. So take it away, Brenda. I'll All ask right. everybody before you start, Brenda, I'll just ask everyone to mute themselves so it makes it a little easier for your presentation. Oh. And good morning, Keith. All right, I'll share the screen then and let me just get set up on my side. All right, and I'm just gonna bump us up out of the way. All right, you can't, I guess, do you see the pictures of you at the top of the screen? Or are you just seeing the screen? Let me move everything up. Yep, we see it on the side. Okay, I'm just trying to move us out of the way so we're not in there too much, but that's probably the best I can do. All right, so that's me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brenda Race, and this is my classification talk for the Rotary E Club of Canada One. All right. So a little bit about where I come from. I was born actually here in BC on the mainland and I've lived here my whole life. And a few years ago, my husband kind of won. It's like a lottery for their company to, to get a position on the island. So they have to kind of jostle for it. And he won it and we moved over here a few years ago and we landed in Nanus Bay and we actually lived on the beach in a resort for the first year. And it was a great introduction to living on the ocean. It was wonderful. And then I, we moved to Nanaimo and that's on the left hand side of the screen. And we've been living here since, but we're not sure where we're gonna go to next. We're looking at moving to the north of Nanaimo. Darren's mother joined us. We've had a few people uh, move from the mainland to join us on the island. And so we'll see we, where we end up next, but I think it'll be up north, probably in Comox or Courtney. All right, and speaking of my husband, there he is. <laughs> this is our, our wedding. We actually, I got married later in life, got remarried and we met eight years ago and we just got married in 2017 in Jamaica. So that's a little bit about us. Actually, neither of us have children. It just wasn't in the in the plan for either of us before we met. So it's just us. But our families are pretty big. Mine is very large. Uh, so I don't have pictures of my whole family. But uh, that's a little bit about us. He actually he works for TELUS, but he is with Infrastructure Build. And so he builds a lot of the internet and that for you know, 911 and those kind of services here. All right. And yep, there's me. So this is my career now. And like Sharon introduced me, I'm a career coach and I just offer virtual job search and career planning services. So on the left is my business card front and back. And on the right is my website on sell. And my job is basically to help clients land one and land the ones that they want. So my clients come from all ages. So working age from 16 and my oldest client was 82, looking for another job at 82. <laughs> and most of my clients, I would say the majority come to me feeling a lack of confidence in whatever it is their, that their situation is. So maybe they want a career change, but they're just really feeling stuck. So they're not sure what they wanna do next. They're not sure how to go about it and they really need assistance. Or maybe they have been applying for jobs, 
but they're not getting responses and they're not sure what's going wrong and they have a feeling they're doing something wrong. So they're looking for help. Or the other situation is maybe they are going out on to interviews, but they're not successful in landing the jobs. And so they need a little bit of help that way. So it can be a whole gambit of things, but that's a little bit about what I do. I, uh, like Sharon mentioned, I've been in it for quite a while in employment services since 96. And uh, I've been in training and development since 91. And what happened is after we moved to Vancouver Island, unfortunately, I became injured and I was laid up for about a year and a quarter and I couldn't uh, sit. I couldn't stand for quite a while, couldn't walk for a little bit, and then I couldn't sit and I had to move my position uh, constantly every couple of minutes. And so it was recommended to me that I work remotely from a doctor and that's what I decided to do is shift my career so I became better this year I launched my business in January and here I am so I'm in business startup mode so if you ever you hear me saying oh I'm super busy and it's crazy it's because I'm just kind of juggling a lot of hats right now and getting everything set up but it's been a lot of fun and I have clients right across Canada so it's been super interesting and I'll get to my background in a second here. So here's how it starts. <laughs> and you're probably like, what the heck is that? But in the beginning of my career, I was in my 20s and I was given some opportunities to develop programs for the government, employment programs. But when I started, they were programs for multi barrier clients, primarily. So the first one I did was with the Salvation Army and, you know, they had a big 50 acre property with a lot of rehabilitation programs in there. And one of them was a culinary arts program. And I took that over to do all of their job search after that. But when that finished, um, <laughs> my professor from university that I'd gone to came to the Salvation Army and asked permission to steal me. <laughs> she had been um, awarded a contract with the government and set up a new employment center and asked if I could develop a brand new pilot program for the government. And it was going to be a nine week full-time program. And again, for multi-barrier clients, meaning the eligibility to get into my program was you had to be out of work a minimum of 10 years. So as a result, what that meant was that I had clients who may have been incarcerated for 10 years. I might have drug dealers in my class. Uh, I remember having certain situations like a woman who was agoraphobic. This is the first time she had left her house in 20 years. Um, everything, a whole gambit of situations, including, and you know, just maybe women who had raised their family for 18 years and this is the first time they're going back but I had all this different type of clientele in one group and because they were out of work for so long there was no way they were ready to go back into the community or into society without this this bridge building and so this particular program they had um, a life skills component that I developed I also developed um, community integration. So they did volunteer work in the community and then a job search component. And what this is, I, I don't know if anybody can guess And Of course you're all mute, but I'll tell you what it is. I'll first of all, explain the situation. I'll tell you what it is. Some of you may already guess, but um, in this particular uh, program, you know, they started every nine weeks. And in this particular group, it had just started. And we had been there for a week and one person and his name is written there. His name is Murray. And he had been participating with the group, but not vocally. And he hadn't spoke in, you know, that whole first week, nothing, not one word. And I can't remember now, I would say he was in his early forties. And he hadn't spoken, so I thought, you know, perhaps he's not getting it, and maybe this is the wrong intervention for him, and maybe I need to speak with my government liaison and put him into a situation that was a little bit more suited for him. 
But, you know, that was the end of the week. It was Friday. And I thought, I just wish I could help him. And I just don't think he's getting it, but I'll leave it for the weekend. I'm so glad I did because I learned a lot about assumptions then. <laughs> and my groups were very inspiring. And when I came in on Monday morning, we had a kind of a circle meeting where we got together every morning. We met in the circle and just chatted about how everybody was feeling and doing. And it was just part of this rehabilitation program. Well, it came around to him and he normally passed and never said anything. Well, I couldn't believe it. He stood up out of his seat and he had this in his hand. And he said to me, and I get emotional thinking about it. He said, this is the first time I've spoken in 16 years. And I've never spoken in all that time. And he said, this is the first time I felt safe enough to speak. And he had no teeth, <laughs> you know, and he said he'd been living in the bush for 16 years. And this is the first time. And, he, and when he walked across the circle, he gave this to me. So here I thought with my negative bad assumption that he wasn't getting it. And in the meantime, that whole first week while he was getting the courage to speak, he carved all of our names in here. And this is a piece of deer antler because it's what he happened to have in the bush. And he carved all of his names. And you can see on the left-hand side, it says the Wild Bunch, because I had them name their groups. And they wanted to be called the Wild Bunch. And it stood for something I can't remember at the time. It was a lot of years ago. But I tell you what, I learned so much. And it was so inspiring. And I learned what a, what a, what a great thing it was that I waited. And you know, I have been given, over these last 25, 30 years, I've been given a lot of gifts, a lot of cherished, cherished gifts from my clients, from eagle blankets, from my indigenous clients to just, I can't even tell you so many things. And you know, you move around, you can't take everything. But um, I still have this. In fact, I have it with me. I'm holding it right now. And I will always um, keep this with me. So that's a little bit about my background and how special it is for me to help people and how I started with where I am now. <laughs> so that's a little bit about my story. Well, and so I did that for a number of years. That pilot program was successfully renewed for five years, which doesn't sound like a long time, but for government standards, they didn't um, approve anything for that long. It was a lot of money, nine week program. And it was very successful. It was all word of mouth, which wasn't anticipated. And it went, went super well. Uh, and then I was offered to go out and do some training on cruise ships. <laughs> and so I did that. You see there's an arrow on the top picture. That's me. And a couple, a few people over on my left wearing white is my team activities coordinator. I was HR and training manager on board cruise ships. And I was working with Celebrity at the time. And we had a lot of different destinations. Of course, we traveled all over, but our ships always had charitable projects that we were a part of, um, all kinds of things all throughout the year. But at Christmas, it was kind of special because we the, the, the crew would pick which port they wanted to um, give gifts to. And I know that's not everything, but gifts were a big thing for this, this group of children. And this is Honduras. And of course, the port back then, we're talking oh, a lot of years ago, that port was undeveloped. That was the first time the ship had gone into that port. And um, so part of our charity work was also helping people get employment. And so we would hire people from Honduras for different parts of the ship. But this was our Christmas operation. And so we brought a bunch of crew and we had it all set up and the crew were buying gifts um, throughout the month and wrapping in them in their cabins. And we had to get a giant flat deck truck and a semi to drive it and down the dirt roads. And on the bottom, you can see some of the children in a church. And I use that loosely because you can see a wall, but that's the only wall. The rest of it's held up with uh, poles and a tin can roof. And that is nowhere near the amount of people. They were lined up all the way down the street. We tried to help as many people as we could. We had enough for 500 children, but they just kept coming. 
And uh, anyway, that's a little bit about some of our things we were involved in around the world. And fast forward, I came back, did more work on, um, did more work at home in different government contracts. And then I was asked to go back out again. And this time in a different capacity as a corporate trainer for the ships. And that took me from country to country. So most crew live on board a ship for quite a long period of time. However, um, I would fly into a country, join a ship, do some training, a couple weeks, one to three weeks, and then I would get off in another country and keep going. And what you'll see here, it's a picture of a picture. So I know it's not great, but this is a cross section of of departments. And so I would teach groups like this throughout the day, every day, throughout the week. And I would teach different things from HR, like harassment training and compliance training and sales training. And this is team building. And this is also communication across departments because cruise ships underground are quite hierarchical and they have a bit of a military type feel and a navy based feel and so sometimes with the hierarchy it can be almost a talking down to some of the lower crew so we want to um, alleviate that and make sure that everybody is treated on a equal playing field so I'm in the middle at the bottom and right behind me is the captain and there is a whole cross section of this group. This is a team building activity, like I say, in communication. And it was a desert survival exercise. Um, in the back row, they're holding a rope ladder. And we had to get the captain and some of his team that were blindfolded. They had to take direction and get across this rope ladder in the water. And there was all these things going um, into play. But it was a way of flipping hierarchy on its head and the the captain and some of his peers had to trust some of the lower crew and uh, it was a really great activity you can see they're having a lot of fun but that's a little bit about what I did there but I tell you I got to say one thing when you flew and traveled as much as I did and you go to customs and they open up your luggage and you have to explain why you have rope ladders and blindfolds, lots of blindfolds. They wonder what is going on. So that was quite an interesting part of my traveling. Anyway, and then I came back and worked again at many employment centers over the years. And in 2012 in British Columbia, they changed the name to Work BC to try to standardize it. And uh, this was the last group that I actually worked at as an employee. Usually I've been um, a contractor, but I was went back as an employee for five years with this group uh, until their contract was closed, unfortunately, in, a, in another bid one. Um, this is my favorite group, but lots of super teams, like it says, and professionals and, and very, very inspiring clients. I do what I do because my clients are inspiring and I feel fulfilled. So, And like I said, I've done lots of charity work over the years, especially being in social service. We're involved in so many things outside of work. Um, and in, I talked about working at Salvation Army and, and in my 20s. I did some volunteering on the side for them as well. And it doesn't sound like much, but in your 20s, and I was developing this um, fundraiser where we had a bit of a, a Christmas trade show of small businesses, and we had all kinds of things happening. And I raised $10,000 that day, which probably isn't a lot, but way back then it seemed like a lot to me. So I was really happy. And then, like I say, lots of different charitable events. And then in, uh, I guess it was, well, 2011 or 28 or 2008 sorry lose track of time I had DVT which is a blood clot um I was almost going to get on a plane actually to go visit uh family in Ontario and I had a pain in my leg and the doctor said you can't get on a plane you got to go to emergency you're not going to make that plane ride um I didn't realize it was that life or death but in the process, I met other people and we didn't know how to take care of the situation for the first year. It's very complicated on how to take care of yourself. So there was no support system in Canada. So I developed the first one in Canada and I worked with Burnaby Hospital in Vancouver General 
and I worked with organizations across the U.S. and I would send out things for free, all kinds of information across Canada. I did a lot of speaking engagements with hospitals and eventually that got me to be speaking in Boston and I worked with scientists and doctors in Boston and I was part of the North American Thrombosis Forum as a patient advocate and I would go down and speak and <clears throat> at one time I even spoke at Harvard Medical that's the pen in the front it's a little beat up right now but that's all I've got to show I was at Harvard which was so intimidating um, but I did it and it was a great project. And I was a part, I did that for quite a long time until eventually I had to travel and give that, give that over, give it up. But yeah, so that's some of what I was involved in. And basically that's about it. I think I'm at time, a little bit over time, but that's a little bit about me. So maybe you have a better understanding of why I wanted to become a Rotarian. And now that I'm on my own with my virtual business and I'm kind of in a bubble by myself even though I see people on zoom all the time I still wanted to be a part of something bigger and I wanted to make a difference that's all I've ever wanted to do so there you go that's me and that's it <laughs> I will stop the share now well thank you so much Brenda uh <laughs> Thank you so much, Brenda. That was amazing. And we are so we are so blessed to have you as a, a ro fellow Rotarian here. Um, I really loved everything that you talked about. And it's, I just have to give you kudos for everything that you've done so, and, and all the travel and everything. So thank you so much for everything. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Is there any, are there any questions of Brenda? And her yeah, wonderful. I was, I was curious. Uh, What's your connection with Doug? Oh, oh, okay, great question. Yeah, with Doug. Okay, well, we have a connector friend, Beverly. And Beverly is a business coach now. And now she's traveling around the world, training business coaches. But part of getting started, because I was injured and I was, you know, lost work and all of that for a while recently. I was part of a government startup program for people that had a, a disabling injury at the time. And Beverly was a connection that they gave me for helping, um, helping support me and encourage me on my business. And then she told me, I said, well, I really want to belong with something and I can't belong with all kinds of organizations. Tammy was, and I were talking about that before we all got on that, you know, part of being self-employed, you want to be involved in a lot of business, a lot of networking events and things, but you can only afford to do so many things. And I wanted something really meaningful. And Beverly said, well, you've got to meet Doug. Because Doug's like my best friend and he's awesome. And <laughs> she talked about Doug and her and they were business people and they were, um, you know, working together, like supporting each other with ideas and things. And she said, you've got to talk to Doug about the Rotary. And so I did. And so Doug was super helpful and supportive. And Doug's what helped, who helped bring me here. That's great. Great. Yeah. Well, it's a really wonderful connection because Beverly was actually one of the very first people that I met in Rotary. And then we later found out that we go way back. We were both from Niagara Falls and we, we joined all these <laughs> dots and, and yeah, we, we call each other cousins. So she's, she's a great person, a good friend of Beverly, Brenda's. Awesome. The power of Rotary, hey? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah really. I think what really jumped out at me, Brenda, is that you've been a Rotarian in training for quite some time. You just didn't yeah. realize it. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. uh, Mickey, who's your so. guest this morning? Thank you for asking. We came on a little late because we had a meeting prior. I'd That's love okay. to introduce Cher Trenum. She's from uh, Florida. She belongs to the Port St. Lucie Rotary Club. Oh. And she is here volunteering with us for three months as our English teacher. And she's oh. amazing. <laughs> wow. wow. Hi. So, um, can, you just, can you just spell your, her name for me? I'll um, put it in the minutes. T-R-E-N-H-O-L-M-E. Hello, everyone. 
Hi. So nice to join you this morning. I'm a, I'm a new Rotarian. I, I was a Rotarian in training too for Good. many years. <laughs> awesome. But I, I just, I didn't know what I was looking for until I landed here. And yes. then I saw Vicki up on the screen one day, at, you know, zooming into oh. Port St. Lucie. And uh, that, it just was magic. It's, I found a home here and these children are fantastic. We're providing many opportunities for these kids and it's it's just it's it's the whole package it just to me it involves my heart everything my the entire uh my entire soul and i know that all of you are supporting this endeavor it's it's wonderful the kids are fantastic thank you so much come back again sometime we love guests thank you <laughs> anyone else have any comments questions judy go ahead Yes, Brenda, I just loved your uh, classification talk. My <laughs> background is uh, I ran an employment agency for over 40 years. And no I did way. Of, and I did a lot of coaching and I, you know, oh. I'm a certified personnel consultant. And, you know, I've done no, nothing as exciting as what you've done, but I've done quite <laughs> a bit of work with different groups as well. And it was just, oh, we wow. we will have to chat. I've got so many questions to ask you and it must be really different for you having always dealt with people in person and in groups to be working on your own at home on uh, Zoom probably. Yeah. Um, and I just wondered, you know, how you've been adapting to that different kind of uh, scenario. Oh, yeah, good question. Um, I'm I'm so used to doing groups, and I think it's definitely something that I will go back to on a virtual level. So after I get, you know, uh, this first year under my belt, then I'd like to do more online training again. And I'm also, I also have some things in the works for on demand training where I have pre recorded videos. My thing is trying to make it really affordable. And I know, I know it's not the best business savvy, but I, people need to be able to afford the services. And, you know, where I live, most people are going to services through the government employment center, you know, obviously where I worked before because it is free, but not everybody can access those services. And some people are still working uh, and they need other support. So it's to make it as affordable as possible. So once I go online with those offerings, I can bring that price point down and make it really affordable for people. And with the idea of it being more affordable than let's say LinkedIn training, mm -hmm. LinkedIn training is $70 a month. So I could make it more affordable for bite size. You know what I mean? So, um, but I still get to help people and the the methodology is the same. Everything is the same. I just don't have that group interaction, but I, I still really love it. Yeah, I'd love to talk with you because we have a lot in common, I'm sure. Well, wow, that's so interesting. I get back home, yeah. for sure. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Great, thank you. And one more guest we have this morning, which some of you may, uh, I know some of you know her, but Libby, maybe just tell us where you're at this morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, it's Libby uh, Weir, and I'm um, uh, president of the Jasper Rotary Club, District 5370. Um, I, I, I met uh, Brenda Lace, uh, Race um, here in Nanaimo. I've moved to Nanaimo, but I still connected with the, with the Jasper Club. It was my hometown, and um, the club was uh, in trouble um, and needing to have um, a lot of work done for it. And so um, I was lucky enough to be to be able to step up. Um, and I have a really great team there in Jasper. Um, so uh, the, the club is coming through and uh, we're gonna be celebrating our 25 years um, uh, th this year, at, or we are this year. Um, uh, I just uh, want to say it was so great to to meet uh, Brenda um, Race and yeah that is the power of Rotary. I, I met Shannon at the uh, district conference and she sure. said oh, um, talk with Brenda and it's so great how the network um, goes through and um, that um, that you can reach out and make a difference to other people in the world. And um, Brenda, thank uh, yeah thank you so much for that um, talk. Um, so incredible to see how something can happen to you physically 
and well, whatever, uh, physically, mentally, mm-hmm. spiritually, it, it whacks you right out and you ha- have hardship and yet you can turn it around to a positive energy. So well done. And uh, I think you found a really good home here in, in, in Rotary. And um, um, as a fellow Rotarian, I'm really proud that you're here um, with us. Thanks a lot. Well, so thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thank you. Philippi. Yeah. Thank we'll you look so forward much. to hearing more about your 25th uh, celebration. So yeah. mm-hmm. we're going to move on now. I'm going to uh, turn the floor over to Sharon, our president, Sharon. And she has uh, going to give us a little presentation this morning on how the donations are used for our club. Okay, I'm hoping I can. Yes, we can see it. Oh, you can see it? Yes. Okay, I just don't want you to see all the slides, but I'm trying to get the slide show to go. Here we go, here we go, there we go. Okay, you got it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, we had a little bit of a a review of um, the weekly contributions um, to our meetings uh, back in June or something. And and, and, uh, Keith gave us a, a breakdown of the percentages and and what people were contributing to the meetings. And we noted that there was a lot of people not contributing to the meetings. So we're gonna talk about, and hopefully get a lot of your input as well as to why we donate to Rotary and um, how we can maybe encourage people to donate to the weekly meetings, whether it be $5, $10 or whatever they choose to do. Um, So why do you donate to Rotary? Why do we donate to Rotary? What is the purpose of it? Anybody? Let's have a challenge. Let's have a chat. (laughs) May I? (laughs) Yes, you may, Ellie. Of course. Well, without donations, we don't, uh, there's no purpose for Rotary anymore. It's the only way we can do all our projects. And uh, I consider it to be part of my membership to make these donations. That's what You know, when I joined Rotary, I understand that it's not a free lunch, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's exciting to see how the club does all these different projects, how much we learn about global issues and community issues and things like that. So, yeah. Thank you, Ellie. Anybody else want to give some uh, thoughts to this or their thoughts? Well, if we also contribute to lots of worthy causes but through the foundation with uh, polio and other um, global grants and the money, the money is always goes to a good cause, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Somebody yeah, else? Just, I'm sorry, I it, can't see you. It's part of being of service for me, like it's, you know, uh, donation is all about, you know, being of service and, you know, helping our community and globally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Doug, yeah. 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 When it, when I am in a position to donate to Rotary, I always feel that it's it's dollar on the ground. You know, like if you give a if you give a buck to Rotary, it goes to the cause. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, a, a lot of it doesn't go to administration. Yeah. You know, I've seen that firsthand, and it's it's it's, it's money well invested. Yes. Yeah, if you've been to any projects, um, you certainly would see see the results of your of your donations for sure. So my thought when I when I did this question was, you probably donate for the same reasons that you joined Rotary for. Service. It's just mm-hmm. as Ali said, it's just part of of your service of being Rotary, and and that's what came to thought to mind for me is that, um, yeah, we donate just to give back to. Um, is this is this, is the pictures of you guys blocking the screen or is it just no. mine? Okay, good. Okay, just wanted to make sure. So give back, and actually that came from a rotary a rotary um, poster that I pulled up from another district, and they had give back on it, and I thought, wow, that's pretty simple. Uh, so we can give back in a number of ways. We can give back through service. We can give back by attending a project, doing hands-on stuff, uh, service in our own community. We're in a different situation. Um, Sharon, your slide's not progressing. Didn't you get give back? No. no. We're oh. still on the front slide. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. We, we can see the slides on the side, but uh, not the sort of. Oh, you shouldn't be able yeah, to we're, see we're, the slides on the just, side. Just click on the next slide. Just click on number two. And there okay, you go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why it's not rehearsing. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So give back. So that was uh, um, something that I had seen and thought, well, yeah, that's why I joined Rotary to give back. You know, we seem to have so much in, in our cultures and there's so many cultures that don't have. What does that come, what comes up for you when you see that those two words give back in relation to Rotary? Anybody? Vicki? Well, I agree with Sharon that um, we who are born into an affluent situation have the responsibility to share what we have and help to, um, balance out the inequality that's in the world and Rotary is a great place to do it because um, with the power of all of us working together to serve, we can make amazing things happen. Yes, and, and I'd just like to add that, you know, we don't always know when we give, we don't always know exactly how, how we're impacting someone's life, but it may be a very, very great impact and a great opportunity for someone that doesn't have the opportunities that we have. Yes. And just being here for, right. I've only been here a month now, just seeing the disparity in um, the opportunity in the culture, you know, even further made me realize that, um, you know, we, we give and, and we know that as we give out, so we are blessed and we are blessed already, so. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think someone summarized it a few meetings ago. Uh, I recall someone saying that is the rent that we have to pay for being in this world. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, I know I always I always feel better <clears throat> when uh, when I give back to something. I think yeah. I better take just as much from it as the recipient for sure. Yeah. Any other comments on that one? Ellie yes, has please. her hand up. I have my hand raised. So. Oh, sorry, I can't see people. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, well, really, the giving back to me, Rotary has given me so much. It's given me a family, friends, opportunities to travel, become a better leader, become a better speaker. Um, it's enormous. If I look back at my Rotary journey, how much I have gotten out of it is like having a new family. Mm -hmm. You know, especially with us being both from different countries. Yes, yes. And and your newest endeavor with the Satellite E Club has launched a whole new generation of young Rotarians. And that must be very satisfying as well. Uh, because yes. Ellie, you did the lion's share of getting that Satellite Club up and running. And I, I got to enjoy their meeting on Saturday. And it, they're so vibrant and they're so committed. And... Uh, they think outside my box, <laughs> so they're they're bringing a whole new um, outlook to Rotary. Those young people. Anybody else want to share anything at the moment about this? These two words, these two simple words. Yeah, yeah it's Libby. I'd love to share on that. Oh, oh. We've it's got great. Some yeah, you are. Oh, yeah. I'd love to share on that. Um, uh, giving back was one reason why I joined uh, Rotary. Um, it was my chance to be able to um, contribute to the community, to be able to reach out and to make a difference to someone, even if it's just one person. And um, it's community, and then the community grew for me um, into worldwide. Um, and for me, it's giving and sharing, and it's a risk, uh, it's a risk uh, reciprocity. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, great. We're getting some. Thank you. We're getting some background noise yeah. from somebody. So that's 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 Sarah that's just wanted to say one more thing if she could. Okay, go ahead. What I wanted to say is that when I before I was in Rotary, I thought of mainly the uh, monetary uh, contributions, but um, I have grown to realize that it's time, talent, and treasure, and all of the time that everyone is putting in to, um, to to collect resources is just as important as the treasure and talent. I know all of you have talents. I was sitting there on my couch 
with my all background of my life and talents, and I didn't know where to put them. So I know that that's another aspect of Rotary is to amass talent. Great. Thanks. I love those three words, time, talent, and treasure. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. So and, uh, can I just add to uh, what you yes, were saying? Yes, you about can. Saturdays. That's what this oh. is about. <laughs> well, you mentioned Saturday's uh, program, um, and I, I assume that recording is available. I'd encourage uh, members to go and have a look at that. Um, the, it, this was a child soldier that oh. was speaking. And, uh, you know, I'm sure everybody knows what a child soldier is. Uh, this mm. kid was taken and forced to fight. And now he's a scientist in Helsinki. Yeah. So, yes, it's, it was an amazing presentation. David and I were there representing RECO. And, yeah, he made an amazing presentation. And he's now becoming a part of the Satellite Club. He's been accepted as a oh. member. Wow. And uh, yeah, and he's uh, just an amazing. If you get an opportunity to go onto our site and, and uh, watch their their um, their meeting from Saturday, that would be, mm. I, I mean, it was very, very moving, very moving. Mm. Yeah. All right, so next, um, and I'm, because we are a satellite club, we, we don't go out and we don't fundraise per se. And uh, and we haven't for a long time. Um, Keith brought forward last year, and thank you very much for that. It was the 10 for 10, our walkathon. And so that was the first time we actually had a lot of excess dollars in order to really do a little bit more. We are a small club and um, we do what we can, but our weekly donations from our online meetings are a large part of how we and why we can do what we can. And because we had this targeted event, our walkathon, that gave us more funds to deal with. And then, of course, we encourage anybody that's interested to make direct donations to one of our projects. And sometimes they come up with a, um, a plea for funds or an event, and they ask us if we would like to do that. And uh, Tammy has been great in, in making sure that that goes on, on our bulletin, and sometimes we will send out an email. But... Weekly donations from our online meetings are very, very important. And uh, I would encourage everybody to, to make those donations. And those can be made um, every time you do a meeting. You can do a bulk a bulk e-transfer or whatever. So, But these definitely are, this is definitely how we get our funds. I don't know of any other way that we would get funds for our club. We don't have an online meeting with a sergeant at arms. We don't have fines. We don't have raffles or anything like that that you would see in a Terra club. So these are our projects for those of you who aren't aware. So we've got all our youth projects, which include Ryla and very, very excited this year to add to that a, a student, an international student that's with the Drayton Club. And we have supported that student. Uh, with some funds and hopefully with some visits. And of course, Vicky's here from Creating Opportunities for Guatemala, Guatemalans. And Ellie is here and she's very active, of course, with Project Amigo. And Judy also was on the board. And then our Dolly Parton Imagination Library. Uh, David's been monitoring that for us. And uh, uh, we have books go to, I believe it's 10 different communities in Northwest Territories, David? Correct. Yeah, uh, two done, children up to their done, fifth birthday. We've done over 16,000 books uh, uh, sent to the Northwest Territories since we started the program. 16,000 books, wow. Without your donations, we couldn't have done that. And we talk about literacy, it starts from infancy to their fifth birthday. So, and and in, in Guatemala and in Mexico, where Project Amigo is, ba is based, um, we've had many Rotarians go down and participate. And this past year, we also had some satellite e-club members as well. So the picture you see there is Judy and her husband, Ron, with our newest uh, um, Exchange guess, student that we're helping. Um, yeah. And Judy, I think you're going to have her out to your home soon. Yes, in October. In October, there you go. And we're gonna make sure that she gets to the district conference 
And the newest project that we've been working with is Himalayan life in Nepal. And I was fortunate just before um, COVID hit to go to Himalayan life in Nepal. And it was extremely impressed with their whole organization and came back and pitched it to the club. And the club said, yes, we will support this. And we did support this with um, scholarships. Um, and then they had a huge flood there and lost most of their buildings. So they're rebuilding now and they've had huge support. They've got um, board of directors in um, Nepal, Switzerland and Canada and huge support. So they, they do amazing things with street children and just the children there and educating them in life and getting them off the streets and getting them trained in, 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 in trades. So those are our projects. So this is where your donation, whatever it might be, goes. I know that Kitty also likes a donation for the song, if you wish to have a song. And I've done that in the past. I had our anniversary song played and a song that my sister loved on her birthday. She's passed away a number of years ago. And just uh, a few things like that. And then if you make a small donation, it again goes towards uh, one of the projects that we're involved in. So any comments on or feedback on any of our projects, anybody? We've got some representatives here. I don't have a comment on the projects, but I'd like to say that uh, we, we are one of the best deals for Rotary Clubs. We, we, we don't have uh, lunch fees, meeting, meal fees. We meet online. We do everything very efficiently and really your hundred dollars, if that's what you're contributing, goes a very long way. And for myself, I know there are a few of us who do it. I, I donate on a quarterly basis and that's easy for Keith too. Or if, if you're look, if you're doing e-transfers, maybe your bank charges you for each one. So it's better to bulk them up. Some people like to do it twice a year. So when you consider the cost of our membership, which we're able to keep the fees very low and the amount that that we like to get from the weekly meetings, even if you can afford to do $20 a month, that's two meetings, that's a minimum of attendance that Rotary suggests, that's, a, that's an amazing contribution and it really goes a very long way. Definitely, thanks Tammy. I know that my costs have certainly come down. I belong to a terror club here and it, every time you walked in the door there, they were expecting you to buy something or contribute to something or and then you had to pay for your lunch and you had your gas costs to get back and forth. So it's not just the fact that we can do our meetings whenever and wherever, but I think it's also um, some it's a type of meeting where you can use your money in a different way. And that's directly to help our projects. And I think that's very important. I like that. I like that. Uh, ability to be able to have my money go where I would like it to go and that's to service. And so any other comments about that, about our donations and any other feedback? We didn't take a lot of time at the beginning of the meeting to introduce each person as to where you're at, but for the purposes of Libby from Jasper and um, our friend with Vicky in Guatemala, maybe we'll just go around quickly and just uh, indicate where you are within our club, because we're mostly all members of RECO, so it'll help the two ladies to understand how we're, we're a dynamic group from yeah. all over the place. Yeah, let's, we'll do that as soon as we shut off, shut this off, so. Yeah. So um, this was something I just loved when I saw. And, and I think uh, Brenda's classification talk, she said it the best. Mm -hmm. Wondering if they made a difference in the world, which you were, but being a Rotarian, you don't have that problem because you know you make a difference in the world. So true. Yeah, so, so there you, you go. Sarah. Yeah, so I hope everybody got to see that. Did you get to see all my slides? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yes. good. Because <laughs> I know in the beginning you weren't seeing them. No, okay. we saw them all. That's good. good, so I love that time, talent, and treasure. So any feedback or comments about donations, where they go in our club, or any concerns about how to donate? So you can donate through our website or you can donate through our actual, actual week, weekly meeting site as a guest. Hi, hi, hi it's Libby. Um, 
I, I probably should know this and I probably can just go to my email and you probably yeah. say you can um, directly donate. Um, this is how to do it. But I'm going to ask it anyways, because I'm here at the meeting. Um, uh, do you guys have a, like a, a, a donation, um, like at the end of this meeting that I could click on and do an e-transfer? And what, what is that, that e-transfer? Yes, it's right on our website. Yeah, okay. You just okay. well, donate donate here I believe. donation form yeah, yeah. yeah there's, a, there's a donate button on the website if you click that it gives you the email address if you want to do a bank interact um, um, transfer you just click on the uh, you can you can copy the email <laughs> address from the website you know I good, good, good while, while Libby brings that up I think it would be a really good idea to put that in the chat box I can do that yeah I can do that yeah. I just have to get it right because I <laughs> I should know it, but uh, it, it said, but but I never use it. What, our it. website address? <laughs> well, no, no, I'll, the, I'll the e transfer email, email address. I'll put the email address in. Oh, the email email email. Yeah, I'll do that right away. Yeah. So that so you know what an e transfer is, Libby? Yeah, I've done oh, okay. it before. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay. But this is really this is really great because um, our club is a hybrid club. And you guys are international, all coming from all over the world. Um, and it's great. It's a new. It's a new system. It's it's great to know how to do it, and, and that's available and um, easy. So yeah. thanks. Yeah. 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 That's great. yeah. And and uh, it's the same with um, prospective members and people that attend meetings. A number of us get a copy of um, that notification. So when you press your attendance notification, I would get a copy uh, and, and Tammy and a couple of other people and the same with donations. Uh, Keith would get a copy saying, you know, you've donated so and so and, and Kitty also gets that information as our uh, meeting administrator and the club administrator. So, so yeah. yeah so the, 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 email, the email address is in the chat box now, so you can actually copy it. And don't don't forget to click it because otherwise you will not record it. Okay, great. So, um, Tammy, do you want to do a, a round? Of yeah. So I'll I'll start with myself. We Brenda, we we know where Brenda's from. I'm uh, Tammy, the current club secretary, past president, and I'm in Red Deer, Alberta. Sharon. I'm in Chilliwack, British Columbia, and I'm currently the club president. And uh, yeah, loving it. And we have a nice, beautiful day. We haven't had any rain here for three months. So, David, it's challenging. Thanks. <laughs> and David Wirth, I'm in Falker, Alberta, vice president of the club and charter member. And also the chairman of our project services committee, project where a lot of our funds go. Spends all our money. That's right. He does <laughs> a good job of that. Yeah. Judy. Hi. Um, I'm right now at Nahihik, Mexico, in uh, Chapala. Or Lake Chappelle, Lake Chappelle area. Uh, we live uh, in Ed or not near Edmonton, uh, Pigeon Lake, Alberta, for six months of the year. Um, I'm a past district governor and I'm on the board in charge of youth services and on uh, the project committee. Great. And Angel, our newest member. Well, I'm Angel. I, I'm one of, the, one of the few ones that live uh, overseas. I'm in uh, La Rozas in Madrid, Spain. And, and, Keith? and past president of your club there yes, as well. Past Just... <laughs> and Gail was president of a club in Spain last year and was an associate member with us, but now he's a full member with us. Uh, so we're delighted to have him as a full member. <laughs> Uh, Go next, ahead. Tammy, Keith, uh, yes. Keith Evans. I live uh, just outside of London in the United Kingdom, uh, and I'm currently treasurer of the club and immediate past president. And Vicky. Uh, you'll never guess where I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Vicky Horsfield. I'm in Guatemala because I run the charitable organization that Fatima is with, whom you support. Exactly. And... Yes, that's where I am too. And I'm very envious of the person who said they hadn't had rain because we have torrents of rain every <laughs> oh, day. No. Vicky no. wanted to give she wanted to give me some yesterday and I said the Rio Grande is running down the street. <laughs> yeah. But I am oh, I am my. planting I am planting on my new piece of property, so I'm glad for the rain. Yeah. Exactly. This is a is a beautiful place in the world to be. 
it's a it's a land it's truly a land of of contrasts and opportunities and we thank you so much for supporting this organization thank you D uh doug thank you uh Tammy, i'm currently on a house sit in central portugal very near oh, yes. the city of tomar and i am the, the official club nomad that's right. <laughs> Doug is also a past president, yes. President Charlie the member. And Kitty. Well, I'm Kitty Bushko, and I am in Sarnia, Ontario. I'm a member of the District 6330 Passport Club, but I'm an associate member of the best club, the E-Club of Canada One, and I do the weekly meeting, and... What else? When That's she it. Says and I do the weekly meeting. She puts the weekly meeting together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I um, apologies. My apologize for being late, but I had a previous uh, appointment, and I did manage to get here for oh, Brenda, we're, we're most of Brenda's <laughs> presentation. Um, but anyway, this is great. So I wouldn't miss this if I <laughs> if I couldn't. If I, I'll, if I'll put the link in the uh, bulletin this week for everybody who wasn't able to be here as well. And Libby, you're we know you're in Jasper. Anything else you'd like to tell us? Uh, no, just uh, thanks very much for um, having me come on. And this has been a wonderful meeting. Thanks. Th thank you. And, and Ellie, tell us your good news. Uh, good news. Well, I am Ellie <laughs> and I'm on my last 25 days in Osoyoos, British Columbia, and then will be permanently in the Lake Chapala area, hoping to visit Judy a lot when she comes back again. And I'm a past district governor and I am uh, what else? a founding past founding president of this club. Yeah. Great. And Nance. Um, I'm Nance McLeod and I'm in uh, Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, right now I'm sitting as the membership chair. And uh, I've been a Rotarian for probably more than 20 years uh, for a while, a clubless Rotarian, but now I'm, I have this club. I found this club, so I'm very happy to be back as a clubbed Rotarian. So yeah, thanks for having me. Great. That's fantastic. Yeah, could I just could I just end with uh, a food for thought? Yes. Okay. So food for thought. Uh, Keith put together a bit of a chart as at the end of May as to who was contributing to the weekly meetings, and there there wasn't names, but uh, twenty two percent of our club are, um, are contributing zero dollars through weekly meetings. Twenty two percent. Another 22%, so that's a total of 44%, are contributing between one and $100 in that period. Now, you said for the year, Keith, and I wasn't sure if it was the calendar year or the- No, that year. was just for the 10 months to, to May. 10 months to May, so almost uh, a full rotary year. And on the other end of the scale, we have 17% of our members contributing 301 to 500, and another 30% contribute over 500. So we've got 30% of the club basically, you know, contributing the bulk of, of, of our donations through our meetings. So just to food for thought. And uh, if you're talking to other Rotarians in our club, encourage them to attend the meetings and make a small contribution. I know Kitty says it all the time in the meetings. So anyway, thank you everybody for being well, here. Thank you again. Exactly. Well, we filled that hour pretty quickly. So it's, uh, we're bang on at 11 o'clock. I'm just going to stop the recording.